Hello and good evening. I welcome you to the how to trade the market opening of the U.S. markets. So today's special webinar, exclusively for uh, JFT brokers. Um, so, yeah, we we want to have a look at the market open in the in the Dow Jones today, and um, I want to give you some insights uh, how I uh, trade this 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 market open here. Um, it's very unfortunate today. It's really I'm 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 somehow a little sorry since the market. Uh, is not that mm, uh, yeah, spectacular. It's, it's um, or let's say it's difficult uh, to 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 have an, uh, a good idea, or not just a good idea, but to 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 formulate a, a, a good trading setup. Let's say. Um, so yesterday there was. Um, it, I wouldn't call it earth shattering, but it was really interesting uh, to to. Um, uh, what, what we got to see yesterday, um, and um, first of all, probably that's that's uh, crucial here. Let's let's get an overview about this before I give you the definition of the open range breakout setup. I'd like to formulate here. So um, all in all, the, the 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 setup itself is is really simple. It's it's not really spectacular or something, but it has um, much to do with doing a lot of research here. And it has also a lot of a lot to do of um, having um, having an overview of uh, having an overview of what's cover currently driving the markets, and then put this in perspective here. And therefore, that was really really um, um, great what we got to see there yesterday. And um, so let let me give you here again this. Um, uh, it was a zero hedge article where it was greatly covered, and then let's say it's. I think I just take this one. It's spook. Why not trying this? I think that was in the that was in the header. There we go. Perfect. Um, so that was an article which um, appeared shortly after yesterday. Uh, uh, the Fed and this is was something the headline already says when the Fed spooked traders with a bubble warning. And um, this is this is somehow really this is as already said. I think Earth. Shattering is, is the wrong word for this, but um, it's it's uh, definitely something uh, to 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 look at, especially uh, for the upcoming months. So, um, first of all, they they refer to, the article refers to to the price action in the uh, in the Dow Jones shortly after the ADP payrolls report was published and uh, showed the uh, highest number in over two years, um, and. As as we know, it, it acts as kind of indication for the NFPs tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure if it's probably better to have a look at the, and this is exactly what's also um, um, uh, um, written down here, disappointing PMIs for market and the ISM report. So their employment component is probably even a better indication for the NFPs. But all in all, we can say, well, the ADP gives you a good overview of what to expect tomorrow. The number were really good. So we got a number which was uh, well above 200,000, was I think 250, 260,000, something in between there. Um, but it doesn't really matter. So it was uh, something where you said, well, probably uh, the let's call it reflation trade, Trump trade, however you might um, um, call it, um, is back into play here. And then and then the Fed minutes uh, um, uh, ticked uh, over uh, the news ticker here. And uh, it was not meant to be, the article says, because while it took the market some time to digest the Fed minutes. Um, the FOMC delivered one of its loudest warnings today that it was focusing not so much on inflation and employment, but was seeking to deflate when even some members, so we're not talking about one member here, but some members um, of the FOMC agree um, it's a stock bubble, warning the stock prices are quite high and warning that its forecast face downside risks if financial markets were to experience a significant correction. This is well, as already said, one of the loudest warnings ever. And it clearly says the moment the market breaks down, well, there is a good chance that we get to see um, um, downside risk also from an economic perspective here. So this is something worth um, um, mentioning here since it if it, and this is something which we have seen in the past already, um, especially the Fed, they stabilized the uh, the markets with their rhetoric directly, indirectly. Well, you name it. But the thing is that this warning here says. 
the moment the market starts to, to come down a little, it's not necessarily sad that the Fed will step up and stabilize prices. Probably they will, but therefore the market needs to really um, come back significantly. Um, remember, Shiller PE right now, um, the Shiller PE ratio is around, um, I think, 30, the level of 30, um, and this is significant since it's the highest reading since I think 1929, uh, and, and well, taking out the dot-com bubble here, and this is, well, you may remember, uh, that was the, the biggest crash in the financial history, if I remember it right, uh, or one of the biggest, let's say, and um, that said, um, we, we have to, 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 to see here that if the Fed gives out, gives out such a warning, this is significant. It means that um, we shouldn't expect, as already stated, we shouldn't expect the Fed to really intervene here and uh, come up with, with, uh, yeah, with propping up um, um, prices here before we've seen, well, I don't know, we've seen a 10% correction, 20%, I don't know. The thing is... Um, even if we are now going down to 20,000 points here, this is 600 points from here, this is nothing big. So um, to, to put this in perspective, if we talk about a correction of 10%, 10% from this current level here is somewhere here around this dotted line. It's the highs of uh, 2060, or no, I'm not, not right. It was the highest, the pre-Trump election highs, let's call them. Um, if the market goes down, let's say 20%, that's also something where you'd say, per definition, this isn't a bear market then, but the market went up significantly. So if it now comes down, let's say 20%, it's 4,000 points from here. It's pushing us somewhere down in this region. The only thing is, from a pure technical standpoint, um, if you look carefully at this chart here, you can see that the Trump lows at around 70,500 points, this is a relative low. And holding this uh, sequence of higher highs, higher lows in play, meaning this is the last relative low. The moment we break below this level um, means we start to negate this uh, this this upside structure, this 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 upside um, sequence here with higher highs and higher lows. But I mean, all this is uh, nothing really big, but could mean some some huge intraday swings. And the Fed bringing out such a warning is really significant. So now. Now the thing is, we've seen here a huge reversal, intraday reversal. So the market went up um, around from, from the open in the morning, went up 180, 200 points, and closed down from here 200 points, 300 points. So quite significant. And um, so based on this price action, we should call this, um, or we, 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 we have a quite high probability, let's say, that we get to see another down day, that the market now starts to sell off. And um, it obviously doesn't. So the market is quite stable. The same thing, by the way, for, for, the, German, for the German market. This is something I mentioned in the uh, German um, uh, form of DAX long or short in the morning. You may remember, you probably listened to it. Um, I said, well, based on this price action, based on, on also the relative weakness here in the DAX, for example. And this is, by the way, something. So the setup I, I will present to you here for the U.S. market, you can easily duplicate it for the DAX, for example, European markets. You can easily duplicate it for other markets like the Bund, for example, MF, FGBL, the Bund future, um, also possible to trade it that way. You need to slightly adapt it um, when trading it for the FX markets, but you probably have heard about the Asian uh, um, and the Asia Asia um, um, breakout system, similar to the open range breakout. So you take the Asia range there and trade the breakout um, uh, in direction of the of the overall advantage. But um, what I want to say is um, you, you have to have obviously a clear overview of where we stand right now. And if you look at the price action, for example, in the DEX, you see that we are, we are facing a downward sequence from the highs at Monday. We didn't make it to new all-time highs. And then we've seen yesterday that the market came in quite weak during the European market um, um, trading hours, then started to stabilize but didn't make it to new daily highs here and then sold off into the correction of the Dow Jones and sold off sharply and below 12,200 um, after uh, um, uh, the market, the US markets started to, to come down here. So now the thing is that in the morning I said, well, do you really want to go short here in this spot? So from, an, from, a, from a, um, a pure um, a five minute perspective, let's call it, you clearly, you, you're facing a downside market. So you, you, you're, there's no reason not to, not to say, well, the advance is on the, on the short side. But then you have to look at the other charts. This is something we'll do for the Dow Jones in a few minutes. Let's look at the one minute, uh, I'm sorry, one hour chart here. It's the hourly. So what do we see? We see that the market starts to make higher highs, higher lows. But 
Obviously, the lows, the significance of the region around 12,200 points, um, and after we broke below this, um, is showing that we start to extend on the downside, let's say. Okay, so this is something I will introduce to you to, um, uh, as something called the distribution area after the accumulation phase. But the thing is, well, we, we shouldn't get into too much detail here. So what I want to say is, if you, for example, look at the um, um, daily chart, you can see that this is the region around former highs. It's the daily chart. It's the dominator of our dominator. So we are trading the five-minute time frame. We look at the hourly chart, something we will do for the Dow Jones in a few minutes. And then if you want to go one step further, you look at the daily and how the daily um, is right now trading as the dominator of our dominator. And this is exactly the thing. So we're trading here in a range of, of former highs and a region where you can think about, well, probably this acts as kind of long trigger. So there will be probably some demand here in this region. If you take this into account, do you really want to be short here, the, the, the DAX? Even though from a fundamental perspective, probably it makes sense. And, and from a Let's call it a sentiment perspective. It's not really a, a fundamental perspective, but a sentiment perspective. So what's the feeling uh, or what's the position of the market currently? So if you look at what happened the days before, and if you then look at this, um, at this warning from the Fed, you would say, well, the market's probably short. Um, and this is the, the, the overall bias. On the other hand, you have to say, well, we're trading in a region where you have a good reason to go along again and, and try to see another push up to the upside. That was the main reason why I didn't want to go short here in the morning based on the setup I will present to you. But um, I, was, I was willing to, say, to take the long side even though I didn't trade the open range breakout then, the, the direct way let's call it, but I wait for a structure to develop which um, led, me to let me come to the conclusion that was something I presented in the morning meeting then, that was after the uh, DAX long or short where I said, well, I don't want to formulate the scenario now but I will give you an idea um, in the morning meeting, two hours later, after the market already showed where we want to go. Um, and then I said, well, we go long 74 here in this case, 174, put the stop at 144, um, at 30 points risk, and then from there we want to see a push back above 12,200. This is hopeful, or not, um, 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 thankfully, was exactly what happened here. But as you can see, um, and this is already the discretionary touch. So it's a, the main reason I give you all this input currently, right now, um, has something to do with the fact that it's not sad that if you give you the, the definition of the open range breakout now, that you can just take it and then trade it. Um, but you, for me, it's it's um, it's more, it's it's acting as as kind of of of, of plan I work through, and I, I can see thanks to this to this uh, plan, I can see okay where do we stand currently in the market. Um, and uh, based on, or no, 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 the plan is more than just the setup. It's, it's, I want to know where do we stand in the market and then use the, the open range in this case to position myself in the market um, to make things easier, to have a, a strategy which can be easily duplicated and everyone can understand this. But therefore, it's, it's not just that you take the, the setup and trade it, but it's a really discretionary approach here where you have to have um, um, an idea, an opinion of the market, and you you really have to think about what's going on in the markets. Else, you have a lot of trouble. Um, since, yeah, since you you will probably face a market environment currently, and this is exactly the thing. So I'm I'm a trading coach too. So I'm not just managing uh, clients' uh, money, but um, I'm also I'm also a trading coach. And people come to me and they ask me, um, Hey, do you have troubles? Um, I'm trading the open range in the in the Dex right now, or again in general. So in the, in the Dow Jones, for example, last uh, um, uh, three days, I, I had three hits. So it was three times was um, the setup I gave to the audience listening to my webinars worked perfectly out. But um, it was the, 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 Dow, well, I'm sorry, the Dow Jones, where it currently works really well. In the DAX, it doesn't. It just doesn't. If you take the pure strategy, it doesn't work. It's like you want to sell ice cream in the winter. It's just not working, okay? Even though it might be a very profitable business in case you say, okay, I'm selling ice cream in the summer and probably I have some, I, I get lucky here around um, um, spring and something in autumn and if I have a solid financial fundament I built my business on, well, I'm still making money. Um, and currently it's really, really difficult to trade the, the um, pure setup here and that's why you have to do your homework here. You have to really think about the markets and get 
an idea of where do we stand right now. And um, yeah, this is exactly why, why I give you all this, um, to, to, to give you an idea, okay, where do we stand? And the Fed in this um, context plays a very, very important role. So they give out this warning and they then you say, well, obviously the market is probably not really willing um, to, 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 to aggressively buy now since we can't, um, 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 we, we can't hope for the Fed anymore since they somehow want to deflate this bubble. Um, on the other hand, well, the market, and then here the hourly chart comes into play. Where is it? Here. Um, if you look at the hourly chart, well, what do you see? You don't see anything at all, to be honest. So that sounds, sounds a little weird, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. So usually you want to see a structure you can work with. So which means, um, I give you one second, I, I, I do it that way. Um, so what you want to have is you want to have a clear structure. So higher highs, higher lows, for example. This is an uptrend. So based on this, you can work. You can clearly find an uptrend, which means, okay, the advantage is obviously on the long side, for example. And what you will do is you will aggressively buy here once the market goes into um, the pullback mode, let's say, and it's, it's trading in the so-called accumulation area, and then you, you aggressively buy, for example, based on the open range setup in this region, while you will say, well, the market, when it pushes higher and it's trading above former highs, well, I really have to, to have a good reason to aggressively buy here. Probably it makes more sense, even though you are still probably trading the long side, to reduce the position size since the market environment now starts to become more, well, you, you face some headwinds, let's call it. Um, you, you face some headwinds in terms of if the market, if this is your dominator, well, it get, it's getting unattractive to buy in this spot here. Since the market went already up a certain amount here, and from a risk-reward perspective, it's getting unattractive to buy here. That's one of the reasons you're saying, okay, if I buy here, I'll start to reduce the position size. I'm not that aggressive anymore since I should expect the market rather sooner than later to lose some of its momentum here, to, to, um, to see the, the demand diminishing, let's say, um, meaning you do not get the support from your direct dominator anymore. And this is exactly what you want to have. So you, want, you need the dominator to, to push you in the, in the right direction. And um, so this is something you will, you will lose here. That's why you start to reduce the position, to position size here. If you position yourself here, for example, well, this is the region where you start to, to take profits to give some of your, your um, um, accumulated position here. And um, that way you start to be well positioned um, uh, in, in terms of, uh, um, um, of the expected value component, saying I want to make my average winner big and I want to reduce my average loser. So this is similar to, let's come back to the ice cream example. This is similar to like, you start to anticipate here in this region that there will be a breakout on the upside. Um, meaning like, well, you're buying tons of ice cream um, already at the, let's say, end of May or end of April or something. When prices are still cheap, okay, you can get a lot of ice cream since you anticipate that it will get hotter um, two months from April on. And in June, July, um, well, the season um, will be in, 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 in um, full place here and you'll be capable of selling lots of ice cream. Not sure if this is possible, if it's, um, 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 if it's okay to buy ice cream two months ago, but just to, get, to, to give you an idea of what's going on here. Um, and uh, this, is exactly, this is exactly the thing in trading too. The moment you are here already, and let's say it's July, it's hot. Okay, great, it's hot and you, you can be sure that there will be people buying your ice cream. The only problem is, well, if you no go to, to, your, to your ice cream dealer, um, where you have to, because you're, you're running a business, you, you want to have the ice cream. Well, he says, well, I know it's hot and I know you need the ice cream, so it's not 10 euros per kilo anymore, but now it's like, 20 euros per, per, per kilo. So it's unattractive to buy. From a risk reward perspective, you have to pay a higher price. This is exactly the same thing with, with trading. It's the same, same idea behind this. So you're, you're the dealer, you're the trader. Um, in this case, you're running a business and you somehow, somehow have to make sure that you're buying in anticipation. You're more aggressive um, and therefore you get a, a higher reward. But the moment the market starts to push already to a region where it starts to get hotter and 
the season is running already in full um, um, with full speed well you have to make sure to say okay well now I'm not buying that aggressive anymore plus on top of that you have to remember well even if it's July August well probably there will be some kind of raindrops or something coming around the corner and uh, autumn is nearing or something I don't know I don't think it didn't make sense to, to think about this on July already but I, I think you get the idea so here you can easily buy for let's say 10 euros per kilo but here you have to pay 20 25 30 because the dealer knows you have to buy because you need the the, uh, the ice cream to have something to sell to the clients the potential clients and then this is exactly what's what what trading is about by the way so and um, now let's come back, let's, let's close the cycle here. So why do I tell you this? The reason is you have a clear structure. And this is something, for example, you saw here in this, in this market environment. So higher highs, higher lows. It's a clear structure, the market is trending up, there are no potential risks somewhere, but what you see is a clear upside trend here, up, um, 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 sequence of higher highs and higher lows, everything, well, it's, it's on your side, even though when the market starts to extend here on the upside, especially here, uh, pushing significantly up, the first 1% up day on the uh, 1st of March, I think, well, then it starts to get really unattractive here to buy. This is like, you know, you're, you're in full speed, you see the trend developing, it's like now buying ice cream in autumn, uh, not in autumn, in, in August or July, at the end of July, when the, the weather is really hot and you need the ice cream as the dealer who's selling it and you're going to your dealer saying well I know you need the ice cream and that's why the price is high um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not continuing but but you get the point you have to pay a higher price for this and the risk is is getting well it's getting it's, it's quite high for you since there's a chance that people say well I do not want ice cream anymore since I had so much ice cream I well I just do not want any ice cream anymore. This is the risk you have. People do not want ice cream anymore. Or you have someone who's capable of selling the ice cream, let's say, 20 cent um, 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 cheaper, since he already bought ice cream here and now can give away um, the ice cream. And that's, this way, um, 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 acting as kind of, of uh, um, 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 Acting as someone who's who's uh, pushing down the price, let's say, and making it difficult for you to sell your ice cream for, let's say, one euro, one euro twenty, whatever you need to to, to make here to to be uh, profitable with your business. So, and that's one of the reasons why you get carefully buying such spikes here. And now, well, as you can see, there is now a sequence of falling highs and falling lows. But this this structure here is not having this. Um, falling highs, falling lows anymore, but the market starts to get choppy. So it's higher here. This was a bullish breakout, and then we were sold again. And uh, this is now making it really difficult to define a clear structure, may, meaning that here in this environment, well, first of all, you start to reduce the position size, plus you probably do not trade at all, as by the way, I did today. So there's no setup from my end here, since the market environment is really, really unattractive. It's not higher highs, higher lows, it's not um, um, lower, lower highs, lower high, um, lows, but it's choppy. That's what it is. So, and and this is something you need to put in perspective here. So, first of all, you have an overall idea. So that's something you need to make sure to to get before we come to the um, um, pure definition of the setup. So, what you need to know is, okay, where do we stand currently? So, what's the sentiment? What's the um, what's driving the markets right now? And this is something where you say, well, on the one hand, it's like, okay. The Fed probably doesn't um, help out anymore, but if markets start to correct um, a little more, they don't jump in and, and push up proper prices here, but they, yeah, they let the correction develop let's say. Um, the question is how long will they develop, but, but first of all you shouldn't bet on the Fed jumping in the game here and, and propping up prices again. So that's the first thing. So now based on the fact that we're quite elevated in the, in the markets here, in this case in the Dow Jones, meaning that it favors a bigger corrective move. Okay, um, now the other thing is, well, somehow markets don't play this right now. So, and that was something you could already see in the morning in the European markets. So, meaning, like, if you have a look, for example, what happened in Asia. Let's, let's have a look here in, uh, at the Nikkei. Where is it? EF. Hmm? 
Where is the, oh, there, there it is, I'm sorry. Um, so what did we see? We saw a break below a quite significant support region here. That's, by the way, something you can see then if you, if you have a clear overview of the market. Um, if, you, if you watch the, the currency markets, you know that the Nikkei must have been down in the morning since the dollar yen, for example, dropped below 111 again. Uh, that was uh, when you saw, okay, okay, Asian markets were, were definitely down overnight, but were bought back and something you could see in the European market. So if there's really, a, I don't call it panic, but if there's skepticism, if people get really nervous, if there's kind of risk aversion now hitting the, um, uh, the markets, well, usually you get to see this all day long. That means it starts in Asia and then you start to get selling, to see selling during the European market hours and then it spills over to the US and you get to see selling there too. If Asia is weak, and then European markets start to stabilize and there is some, some, some buying coming into the market, well, it's obviously no real risk aversion. So it can develop in the, uh, in, in the, in the later hours of trading day. Nevertheless, well, it's not sad that uh, the market is, is really getting, is, is really nervous right now. Um, and if you now put this in perspective, now you can say, okay, obviously the market is not under this pressure as probably you may have thought when you read those warnings from the Fed in the minutes yesterday. So meaning, probably you shouldn't expect too much on the downside, even though you, 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 you have a good reason to believe that there is some selling pressure. Um, and then you look at the, at the overall picture here in, the dom in your dominator. By the way, it's not the daily, I'm sorry. This, this is completely wrong. So you have to, to see that this is the hourly chart. Well, that means you have a choppy gr mode that means you do not have a clear advantage. You can't spot the advantage on first look or at first glance, I think. Um, uh, and this means, well, probably it's better to just step back, okay, and, and uh, look for, for another market or just say, okay, um, let's see whether we get a better chance tomorrow then. So now let's come to the definition of the RB uh, setup here. So first of all, and this is something you can you can see here already, something we did now in much detail here, identify the advantage. You can do this based on two um, uh, um, components I, I named here. So based on Dow theory, that's really rough higher highs and higher lows, or via the 205 minute um, um, simple moving average. But I obviously like to get into more detail here. Sometimes I pay a price for this, since uh, sometimes I, I just, let's say overcomplicate things here, but there are also many times, and this is something I know since I have a very detailed trading journal, there are many, many times when I say, well, let's just leave, leave the market alone today. It doesn't make sense since this doesn't fit the overall picture and everything. And um, nevertheless, probably it, it makes more sense uh, if, you're, if you're a beginner to, um, yeah, to say, well, I'm not just um, using a very rough idea here of where to find the advantage. Let's say higher highs, higher lows, a clear structure where you say, well, we go from the bottom left to the top right. Obviously, we're going up. Um, but go into more details to also get a feeling for the market, which is really important, I think. And um, well, all in all, it's like you have to identify the advantage. So if you do not have an advantage, it doesn't make sense uh, to, to trade at all, but you have to have an edge and you have to identify that edge and you have to clear, make sure that, that, you, that you, um, you can easily duplicate this. So then the second thing, define the open range between 2.30 and 3.30, uh, 3.15, sorry, GMT. Um, so this is usually the time when uh, the Wall Street opens, that it's uh, 2.30 p.m. GMT. And, um, and, well, then you leave the market to, to build a range between the 30, first 45 minutes of the trading day. Um, and uh, then you do something really simple. You trade the breakout of the open range in direction of the identified advantage, and you put the stop above or below the high, respectively the low of the range, meaning... If you now look at the market, and uh, by the way, even if I didn't formulate a clear setup um, in the German version of the um, market open here, I said, well, I tend to trade the long side. If you put a gun to my head and said, well, say long or short, I'd probably say I take the long side. 
um, and this has something to do with the price action we've seen so far in the European markets. Um, and let's let's just imagine we did exactly that. So by the way, you, what you see here is something. Um, I have an indicator for this. It's the so-called breakout indicator. The great thing about this um, indicator is, if you have this indicator in your chart, you can say when the period begins, when the period ends, and uh, then when the box ends, and it will be automatically drawn into your chart. So you don't need to 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 to. Um, yeah, to, to, to find the high, the low of this interval or something, but it's automatically drawn into your chart. And um, then you have those two lines. You say, okay, I think if you put the, as I already said, I don't see this huge advantage on the long side, but based on, on my, my gut feeling on top of that, I'd say, well, take the long side, okay? This, this is like, it, it's, it's something you can see um, with, with some experience that it's probably the long side here. Um, and uh, then you say, okay, I'm buying the break of this high, which is currently at 20,684, and then you put the stop below this, uh, this box, which is 20,607, so, and that's all. Um, you go long with a break to new highs, so we are currently long, and then you put the stop here at the daily lows, and uh, that's it. And uh, so then the next thing is, if you have a clear advantage, for example, you're probably about to break a significant level on the upside, on the downside, doesn't matter. Well, um, you have a different approach to manage your trade um, if you, as if you have a market environment which it doesn't clearly favor one direction, but where you say, okay, this is nevertheless the advantage from an objective standpoint. Let's say we're trading above the 200 uh, SMA five-minute time frame or we are trading um, in a in, in reach of a new high, let's say somewhere here in this region, probably. Um, so we're trading here. Um, you're not probably. It's a, you're saying, well, there's a good chance that markets now start to tend lower and and break those highs. Uh, I'm sorry, break those lows. Um, or we are pushing towards the highs. The high, probability is higher that we push towards the highs since we have an upside structure in this case. Um, and um, then you say, okay, well, I could, and if the sentiment is right and everything, um, I could work with, uh, with an approach saying I anticipate the break and I hope that the market keeps on moving higher from there and that I get as much out of the trend probably developing here as possible. But nevertheless, there are probably a higher chance that the market will face some trouble here, meaning that you're then working with a take profit. So if I try to anticipate a break and uh, a trend structure, I want to see a trend structure developing here, then I'd say, well, um, I work with something like the super trend indicator, for example. So um, I'm not sure, do, do I have a picture here? No, I don't have the picture here, but let me just, let me just check if I, if I can, can find a picture. Probably let's use this one. So it's a German uh, presentation, uh, but but um, hello. Okay. So, but I know that I have a picture in here, and it's it's not the um, it's not the Dow Jones, but it's similar to the DAX, for example. Okay. Okay, so here it is. Um, so what you can see here, this is a great thing. You have a trend, in this case, on the downside. Um, so what I did here was, for example, I gave an, an idea of you have the um, advantage. You identified it. It's first step. Okay, the advantage is short. So you have the open range, um, which is, by the way, here in the decks, I'm, I'm using two um, lines. In this case, those, those uh, my, yeah, this is pink or well whatever um, the reason is that I that I started to work with these lines and I'm working with these lines for years now and this is something I just I have them in my chart in case of the Dow Jones I'm working with this um, with 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 the breakout indicator it, it doesn't really matter but just to to um, give you an idea why why are these lines here uh, in the chart and then you have the um, open range and then you're saying it's a setup simple you trade the break on the downside, in this case, since the advantage is on the short side, you have to stop above the high of the open range. You have a risk of 48 points, and then you have a, a target based on 
on your market research, and which in this case was around 10,200 points. And um, then now the thing is, what do you do? You work with with uh, with uh, um, take profit, or you work with this um, um, you work with the super trend. In this case, with this aggregation here. I, as I already said, it, it depends, and I will show you to you uh, somewhere in the future. So we we have this format here every week on Thursday, and there will be times when I have a trade on, and I can perfectly show you how to manage a trade here. Um, but in this case, as you can see. Well, you, you have obviously um, in trending markets, you have a very strong indicator here. So um, I had examples where the um, take profit was five, six, ten times sometimes when the market was strong, trended really strong and you really um, 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 hit the market perfectly and the setup was perfect for the day. Um, you, you sometimes had a payoff which was 10, 10 1. Um, so, and then and, and clearly better than if you, let's say, work with a take profit level. Um, uh, and a predefined take profit level, which is um, lying around one to two, um, somewhere in the direction of your trend. Um, but nevertheless, therefore, you need a perfect market environment. This 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 indicator works perfectly if you really hit the market right, and if you have the right market condition, everything fits perfectly. Nevertheless, um, sometimes it makes more sense to work with the take profit level since the market doesn't show this perfect structure. For example, like today, if I now work with such a scenario here, um, that's, that's by the way, let's, let's write it down, it makes more sense. So let's have the editor here and then they say, well, the setup is DAO, OR uh, is the open range, um, and then you say, as already said here, the open range is 20,607 and 20,684. So this is the open range. And then... Uh, 607.2684. And then you say, well, the entry long, since you identified the advantage on the long side, you say, I'm trading this level long. Probably you take it once um, one point down to uh, 683. That has something to do with um, trying to avoid slippage here. You put the stop below the daily lows. In this case, it's 607. Then you have a risk. And this is, by the way, already something where I say, well, if I look at this very unspectacular trading range currently, I do not expect the markets, uh, the market to really push high as I need it to run, by the way, which is here, 77 points. And if I want to have a risk reward of, of 2 to 1, or 1 to 2 in this case, um, if you have a target which lies at 2 to 1, that means you need to have a run of something around 150 points from this level. 150 points from this level, meaning you're pushing about, yeah, above um, um, 20,800 points. So close to this red line, probably to those those highs here. If you if you look at the chart, well, what you obviously need is an external trigger. I don't see this trigger right now. That's one of the reasons why I'm really skeptical here. But all in all, I'd say, well, we need we, we need to, to get a risk reward of two to one, we need to get to see such a push here. That's, by the way, also one reason I'm a little uh, re reserved here, let's say. Um, so that's around 20,830. By the way, that, that needs to make sense. So just saying, okay, I'm, I'm working with this target probably makes more sense to say I target the highs from yesterday. So a significant region here. Uh, in this case, it would be uh, 880. Um, but to, to just show you, yeah, probably makes sense. Um, to, to get um, such a risk reward of 2 to 1, um, look, for, look for a target, a potential target, which is uh, making sense in this case. So, and uh, in this case here, it's 196 points, and then you have your trading scenario. Um, but as already stated here, 196 points from the current level, somehow I do not have so much optimism right now <laughs> to see such a run. But uh, this is something where I would place my stop. I, I don't expect for ex I, I'm, I'm to take profit. I do not expect the market to push above this level. Um, 
since also here the the uh, current uh, sentiment the, the mental side comes into play i do not expect market participants to be really that optimistic that was completely different for example here in this market environment where everyone was somehow expecting the dow the, the s p uh, to yeah to push lower me too by the way and uh while the market didn't um yeah didn't react to this it just just went higher and as you as you could see back then uh, there was no real reason to be short Really, there was no reason um, since you obviously saw that the market needs a trigger event for this. And there was no trigger event ahead, well, or around the corner. Um, a black swan probably, but this is something you can't anticipate. It's just happening then. And um, if you remember, uh, that was at around, I think it was the, the, the 8th or 9th of February when uh, Trump announced there will be something phenomenal in terms of, of uh, tax cuts here. And that will be announced in around two, three weeks well, when Trump said this, it was clear that if he wants to disappoint the markets, um, well, we need to we, we need to to wait something like two to three three weeks. So there's no real reason to believe that that there will be a big announcement before that, and that was something which made it nearly impossible for the markets to really come down. The only problem I have right now is um, this is something called something we will make a topic in some of the upcoming events um, in terms of behavioral economics that's something called a uh, hindsight bias um, you have to remember that there were several reasons um, why this is a little uh, yeah it's a little shaky what I'm saying this is a little shaky since since I know really well that I was like uh, well there is potential for such a um, um, sell-off here like um, it was a b expiration date here around um, it was the midst of February. There was uh, rumors that the big hedge fund was um, uh, was 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 buying the S and P for hedging purposes. Uh, was a seventeen billion dollar bet or something going sour? Well, there are several reasons to think. Okay, there's probably some trigger. But all in all, if you now look back, well, there was really no reason. Something similar. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not similar. Something completely different. What we face in the current market. Um, environment here so there's no real reason to to believe that this is happening and this by the way also something which the market tells you already with this choppy structure here um, now that's one of the reasons why this this setup here is not my really favorite setup right now since also the market doesn't show you the structure you read really, you really want to see to to identify a clear advantage that's by the way something um, now we can close this. Something which is, or which is here, something uh, we will want to look at now. Um, so this is the discretionary touch. You've already seen. I've already presented you my discretionary touch. So how to find the advantage? Um, it's it's not a setup. You can easily you can easily program this. It's no no big deal. So uh, you you have already. The, the indicator, I presented it to you here, it's a breakout indicator. So you can easily say to the indicator, buy the break, put the stop below the lows, and plus the market has to trade above the 200 um, um, SMA, simple moving average. You can easily easily program this with an expert advisor. It's no big deal. Um, but nevertheless, I do not like to trade it that way. But what I want is this discretionary touch here um, making it possible for me to say, well, I can intervene here and 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 decide whether I really want to take this setup or not. So, and this is exactly what I'm doing here. But I, I do it on a way, in a way which which is um, a little uh, more objective. So, what I presented to you at the beginning of this webinar was my my personal feeling right now and my personal idea of what's currently driving the markets and why do I act as I as um, act the way I do. Um, while uh, here, this discretion, discretionary touch is it's a more easy way. It's, it's, it's simple, very simple. Um, so what I do is I look at the dominating time frame of your traded time frame, which is in my case, when I trade the five minute time frame, my, my um, direct dominator is the hourly. And then um, look at where we trade. This is the, the, this is the thing. So where do we trade right now? It's the, deck, the accumulation or is the distribution area? And um, if we are trading in the accumulation area, well, then I'll be really aggressive in direction of the trend, in the in direction of the um, uh, identified advantage. While if we're trading in distribution area, it depends. But sometimes 
uncyclical setups will be considered. That's, by the way, something I did yesterday. So um, the days before, I was, um, I was saying here, days before, we started to, to somehow bottom out here. And I was willing to take aggressive long setups. That was on Monday, but it was also on, uh, on Tuesday. On Wednesday, yesterday, that was when we pushed above this level here. And then here, when we pushed after the open, pushed higher and pushed significantly above 20,800 20, points without looking back, but just pushing aggressively 130 to 150 points above 20,730, 750 points, this significant um, 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 uh, resist, resistance here, I considered it to be significant. Um, well, everyone decided for himself, but, but the fact that we, that we pushed towards this level and didn't push higher here uh, meant something. And uh, meaning the moment we break above this level, we can probably expect the markets to, to pick up some momentum here. And um, so that was, that was um, one of the reasons when we pushed that high without looking back that I said, well, now I'm willing to go aggressively short here since I consider the market to be a little extended. Um, that was based on, on, on my knowledge here that we pushed above this significant, a significant region here and that we have a good chance to get to see a pullback. Um, back to the to the breakout level here. That was one of the reasons why I then made uh, um, anticyclical short engagements a topic. By the way, I have to say, um, I don't think that we had uh, or participated at the whole uh, move here, but what we saw was already a pullback here. I think we would have been stopped out here in this correction, and then when the market picked the momentum based on what the Fed um, um, delivered and, and, and their statement and, and where, they, where they said, well, there is a warning, there are warning signs, there are red lights flashing. Uh, we have to be careful here about the current, uh, um, uh, the current levels where we're trading at, at the equity markets. Um, that's probably something where you said, okay, I, I somehow profited from this push lower here. Um, but it didn't profit it from this move down here. Um, nevertheless, I, what I usually do, I'm working with progressions and regressions. And uh, so the thing is, when we push that high here without looking back, there's a good chance that there will be a correction. If, if the market does not correct and if it doesn't pull back, it is a clear sign of strength. Um, even though I nevertheless take uh, the short here, I try to, to, to get to see um, such a pullback. And um, if the market does not pull back, I still know its strength, and that means I'm having a clear defined stop above the highs um, 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 of, the, of the initial move here. Since I know if the market's pushing higher now, after pulling back, not pulling back sharply, it means that really as a strength, you don't want to be short in, the, in such a move. If it's the same thing the other way around, you don't want to be short. Um, um, or you don't want to be long in a weird weak market environment. You have to place your stop um, accordingly. And so this is something I'm playing with here. So I, I have a, I have a really, um, um, I, I want to have a clear feeling of where do we trade and, and what can I make out of this. And in this case here, um, yesterday I considered it to be a distribution area. So nevertheless, it was a distribution area which couldn't be identified um, um, in the classic way, but you have to, to, to dig a little deeper, let's say. Um, and uh, so that's, that's how you, yeah, you can understand the word depends in this context here. So uh, meaning, meaning in this case that it depends um, on, on where do we trade. There's also a chance that we are trading here shortly before this red area. This is the so-called distribution area. Um, where you distribute what you accumulated here in the green area, but let's say we're trading closely to this to this um, old high here. That's for example something where I consider aggressive long engagements, aggressive in terms of position size, being a little bigger, be, being a little more aggressive here. Main reason very simple. Um, you know that many market participants look at this level. So I've traded for example the break above twenty thousand. Um, the first time the, the, the Dow Jones traded above um, 20,000, that was, I don't know, was it here? I think so, yes, yes. So it was, it was at the end of, 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 of January. Um, 
I was really aggressive here when the market pushed, it touched this level um, and it broke above this level. Um, I traded it really aggressively. It was some kind for some people who who uh, um, listened to me for for quite a while, especially in the German trading community, it was surprising to hear that I'm going aggressively long with a break above um, this 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 level about twenty thousand. But you have to remember, it's a round number. Everyone is watching it, and when you can expect stops to be placed, well, they are definitely placed. They are definitely placed above this level, and not just stops in terms of anticyclical engagement, but also buyers coming in into play here and buying the break above twenty thousand. So what you try to do is you try to somehow anticipate such a break, and you also know that if the market breaks this level, it won't um, um, aggressively turn around. So this usually does not happen, but the market uses some of this momentum here and then it's probably coming lower as it did then here in into the the uh, monthly um, close but there is no real reason to believe that the market will sharply um, turn around here but um, probably take some of this momentum and pushing higher here and this is perfect if, if you're trading in a, in a low um, time frame as the five minute time frame here um, since you go aggressively long here in this spot then and try to trade um, such a move while you clearly and you're definitely aware of the fact that you start to trade into the distribution area where you should expect um, a diminishing uh, demand here, getting more aggressive with your stop and um, yeah, taking out the position at the moment the market leaves, uh, lets, lets you out. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's all I have to say. Uh, so this is the discretionary touch. Um, as already said, so usually I really like and I prefer to show um, um, these thoughts here in a market environment um, um, live. So this is something I, I really prefer. I do not like to, to show you this, by the way, one of the reasons I already closed the, the other presentation here. It doesn't make sense for me to show you charts from the past and where I said, well, look how great this played out. You may remember, you may, may have read um, 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 trading books uh, where, where you see perfect formations like head shoulder formations always playing out. Well, sure they play out. I mean, I don't need to write a book to show you a head shoulder formation which doesn't play out. Um, I mean, I look like an idiot. I show you something where I say, well, this is a great formation. By the way, it doesn't play out that way uh, at this time, but it will in the future. I don't think you will be um, you will be convinced about this. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I, I usually show those um, thoughts here and, 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 and definitions and trading setups, potential strategies, I really like to show them um, here in real time and in the current market environment. And unfortunately, the market right now doesn't give us a good chance here, even though we can say, well, currently we are breaking out on the upside. And probably the market keeps on pushing higher um, now. So what, what you usually do is the moment you, you have um, your um, 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 risk earned and, and the, the P&L is showing you one R. Um, in this case, this would mean you, you're somewhere trading around 20,750 points. You start to take the stop to break even and probably you start to get more aggressive already. So usually you say, I work with a take profit as stated here. So take profit somewhere around 880 to get um, um, a risk reward of two to one, and probably better. Nevertheless, um, in such a volatile market environment, it definitely makes sense to say, okay, I start to work with a uh, um, trading stop here already, and also here the the super trend is working really well. So um, saying I have this aggregation, and then I'm using those dots on the downside to, to trail my stop already, meaning you can already trail the stop here towards 20,648, um, taking out some of the risk here, and uh, meaning that your, that your risk is not those 77 points anymore, but 36 points. And um, yeah, hoping that the market now starts to, to trend up to the red line, which is the line around the highs from yesterday. This is, by the way, the line um, you're working with here with your take profit even though you start to trail your stop already with those dots here. Um, yeah, and that's that's it from my end. I hope you enjoyed the morning meeting. Uh, the morning meeting, no, the morning meeting is something we'll uh, um, have uh, tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. GMT. The English version, the German version takes place at, um, at 9.30. So I'm, I'm also seeing some, some uh, some some German names here. So I, I, I think that some some might say, okay, 
Uh, he's also doing some English stuff, but tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. GMT, it's the morning meeting, at the JFD uh, Brokers Guidance Desk, something you um, can just tune in. It's, it's uh, completely for free. And um, nevertheless, uh, we talk again to each other at uh, 10.30 a.m. GMT in English then with the English version of the morning meeting. I hope you enjoyed this version here, the special webinar around the market open. And um, so we talk again to each other next week, by the way. So next week on Thursday, we have um, another special webinar, which is the uh, three columns of profitable trading. So if you like to to uh, get my thoughts on this topic, then uh, yeah, I really appreciate to to uh, welcome you here. And um, now I wish you a nice evening uh, and uh, have some fun if you're positioned. Watch your stops, and talk to you again then tomorrow in the morning meeting. I look forward to it. Have a nice day, and see you. Bye bye.